to key elective positions in the 2023 general election is no longer a marathon. It is now a sprint with a finish line in sight. The tension in different political uh, camps is being transmitted to excited will-be voters who have, vet, who have vested interest in the logo that tops the ballot. For the politicians, many believe the stakes are even higher as the consequences or rewards for backing the right horse have a direct impact on their future relevance or obscurity. It is the Nigerian way. In a few short weeks, the promise from the podium will be rewarded by the thumbs on the ballot sheet. And like one of the early books rightly stated, many are called, but at the end, few are chosen. This is Political Update. I'm Fisai Ogunfui. Welcome. With just a number of weeks to the 2023 general elections, the Inter-Party Advisory Council, IPAC, says it is confident that the nation's election management body, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, will conduct a successful exercise. This formed part of the council's resolutions during its general assembly in Abuja. On the agenda of the Inter-Party Advisory Council's general assembly meeting was the evaluation of emerging threats to the 2023 general elections particularly what it described as frivolous allegations of false assess declaration leveled against the INEC chairman. Attacks on the commission's offices in some parts of the country which destroyed sensitive and non-sensitive electoral materials. IPAC is satisfied with the preparations, arrangement and measures taken so far by the commission to conduct free, fair, credible and transparent, inclusive, peaceful and generally acceptable elections. INEC's position on deployment of technology in the conduct of the 2023 general election is in tandem with the stance of IPAC, says the General Assembly. The council back deployment of BIVAS, IREV, for 2023 general elections and urge Nigeria to defend the nation's heart and democracy. As the umbrella body of the 18 registered political parties, IPAC emphasized that it will continue its roles in consolidating and deepening the nation's democracy ensuring an environment conducive for successful elections, political stability, enduring democracy, and overall well-being of Nigerians. President Court of Appeal, Justice Dongban Minsem, says any staff who attempts to compromise the workings of the forthcoming election petition tribunals would lose their jobs and face prosecution. She so stated this at a two-day capacity building workshop for election tribunals registry staff at the National Judicial Institute in Abuja. <laughs> Campaigns by candidates of various political parties vying for positions in the next dispensation are underway, with the presidential election and others scheduled to hold in February and March this year. Expectedly, exercise of this nature is bound to be trailed with disagreements among political actors explaining the place of the electoral petition tribunals as an arbiter, a role that they have been playing in the nation's democratic electoral process close to three decades. It's to make the adjudicating processes better in line with the 2022 Electoral Act and practice directions that inform the capacity training of the election petition tribunals registry staff. The theme of this workshop which is challenges arising from an election petition tribunal and the way forward, emerge from offensive analysis of past experiences. We we'll seek today and tomorrow to highlight the various challenges associated with the tribunals and adequately praising you up against them. Different topics have been designed to equip the participants well enough to face the daunting challenges ahead. She told trainees made up of 163 who have served before 
and 107 new ones that tribunals shall open seven days before the election as provided in the amended electoral act and warn them to be upright in the performance of their duties. If there is any need to pull out some people, we shall do that immediately without any hesitation. And the need to pull out may arise from misconduct, inability to carry out your functions properly, and the tendency to compromise the system. So I can assure you that we are well equipped. The registry staff comprised of tribunal secretaries, process servers, who shall be responsible for filing of petitions and processes for ease of adjudication. In Abuja, Austin and Yube, NT News. Now, globally, elections remain one of the major pillars of the democratic system of governance because it affords the citizens the opportunity to play an active role in the decision-making process of their country. Over the years, however, illicit arms trade seems to be increasingly threatening elections, especially in Africa. We we'll take a look at its manifestations in recent times. Best of the country's democracy depends on the conduct of violence-free and transparent process. It is also a fact that it is through election that the power which is entrusted by the people in their representatives is transformed with authority, that is, the right to govern. How has this process fared over the years? Definitely there is a lot of interest, a lot of enthusiasm shown by both the politicians and also the electorates. But even the watchers, I mean those who are watching Nigeria, Ordinarily, the conduct of violence-free election is expected to enhance democratic tenets, but many believe the reverse is the case in Nigeria. This is due to the alarming rate of arms proliferation, which is directed at encouraging electoral violence in Nigeria since independence. By this action, the president has further demonstrated Nigeria's commitment to the provisions of Article 24 of the April's Convention on Small Arms and Light Weapons, which requires each member state to establish national institutions to promote a multilateral approach to stamping out illicit arms trade in the South region. With another round of general elections coming up in February and March this year, the undemocratic experience of political thuggery can be minimized even if not a complete eradication through refined political culture. And it begins with a step as being demonstrated here through a commitment by this set of youth. We should know that we are facing 2023 election and students we are going to play a vital role by determining who will govern us. We equally call upon the youth to show social bias, drug abuse, and political toggery. Political players and watchers also have roles to play in ensuring a violence-free election. Killing and murdering and manipulating the electoral process are all within the electoral offenses segment of the Electoral Act 2022. How many Nigerians are aware of those provisions? So our view is that the non-state actors who are the electors or the voters need to equally be prepared. This should be what to be at the back of our mind as young ones. Now we may be, be allow yourself to be used when their own children are in the US or London or America or Japan. Let them bring their own children to perpetrate violence for them. Say no to violence. Yes to issue this campaign. It is therefore important to know that arms proliferation is an underlying factor in the perpetration of electoral violence of various magnitudes. Such include political talks clashes, electioneering campaigns disruption, destruction of electoral materials, harassment of voters and electoral officials. We cannot afford this only towards the 2023 general elections. Ongoing efforts being made by the government and its agencies to checkmate arms proliferation may appear to be infinitesimal and ineffective in achieving the desired goal. It is hoped that 2023 may be a game changer in the face of the numerous assurances being given by the present administration to leave a legacy. <laughs> A 
Our guest interview on Political Update today features Kola Abiola, the presidential candidate of the People's Redemption Party, PRP. Abiola, whose name is synonymous with the struggle for democratic governance in Nigeria, recently sat down with NDA's Adeni Itaiwo. He promised Nigerians quality leadership if given the mandate to serve as president. I've been committed, I've traveled in this country, I've committed not just in my deeds, but I have sacrificed for Nigeria. We have not in 1993. We just didn't lose an aborted election, but we, in the process of standing by Nigeria, I lost my father. He lost his. I lost my stepmom. And it has cost us dearly. I fought. But 20 odd years to get that recognition for that election. I got it eventually three years ago. And if anything goes wrong with Nigeria, then that sacrifice is wasted. I'm standing to run for this office because I believe in this country. I believe in its potentials. I believe in its future. My children, your children, and our youth as to in totality, which makes up 70 percent of this country. And I'm going to do what it takes to make sure they have a place in this country. And that's why you need to vote for us. And when you vote for us, you are voting for a party that has no blemish. You're voting for a party that comes with no baggage or legacy issues. You're all clearly voting for two candidates and plus 70, 709 others who have never held governance, especially the two of us. Uh, myself and Nairo, the vice presidential candidate, we come fresh, we all come with fresh concepts and ideas, and at the end of the day, we hope to leave a legacy of a better Nigeria. We come with, some, with a pedigree that is known, we come with a legacy that is known. I am from NKO. His father, uh, Harold's father, is an ex military Air Force general. We've all sac we, we've sac uh, we, we come from a line that has sacrificed to keep Nigeria together. He, he, his father fought in the Biafra War. So, we, we owe it to them to make sure this country doesn't go down the tubes. And that's why we're in this race, and that's why we believe we should vote. And you should vote for PRP and start a new beginning for Nigeria. We're about the people. We we're grassroots as a family. And we've continued to be grassroots. Everything we've done is to the benefit of the grassroots. And that goodwill is... I'm even shocked till now that I go out and I go to places and I get the airplane of love. I was driving to Ikiti the other day, I lost a tire. And the number of people... I thought nobody knew me there. But before I knew, there was traffic. They blocked the whole... And I, I didn't have escort, I didn't have anything. I just, my usual thing, get in my car and go. And the odd point that I got, and people trying to give me food or give me gifts, and they gave me, I think, um, um, <laughs> sorry, excuse me, I didn't know what I <laughs> to pack in my boots and all these and things like that. And that's the kind of reception I get anywhere I go. As kind of, and, and as a party, and as and what we've done very effectively over the past few past few months is to go and do a lot of FM because that speaks to the grassroots. You see, that seventy percent, that demographic group, we have a misconception about it. We have a small group that is Twitter savvy, Instagram savvy, Snapchat savvy and so on and so forth. But if you look around you, your driver, your mechanic, your conductor, your megadi, your besuya, your meshai, they're all in that, 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 that group. They may not be savvy, but they're in that group. And they have a vote, and they have a voice, and really, as opposed to the small group, they vote. And that's where the difference lies for us at PRP. And that's what we look at. And those are the kind of people that I see in the streets when I go. Or the people that in the, in the way to a kitchen the other day that came out to help me. Those are the people. They don't know about Instagram. But they, they knew who I was just like that. Maybe because, yes, 
thanks thanks to the loyalty of my mom, I didn't so much like my dad, but that's what it is. I said something there also that I probably won't we tend to forget very quickly. We had a bill of bookshops, we had a bill of farms, we had all these things even in the southwest. We had the largest donations to universities and uh, polytechnics in Nigeria. We've done a lot of things. And to this day, we still keep paying for IAC bills for kids that cannot afford to pay for the IAC. I don't make noise about these things. I'm not the guy that, because he's running for politics, decides to start by the uh, Abado seller. And then, I don't know why this Abado thing is coming up so much. But the Abado seller, and then they film you and put you on Instagram. I don't do all that. I've bailed out so many people in hardship. I've bailed out. I don't even know who they are. That's that's the thing. I know that's easy. That's why it's easier for me to forget them because I don't even know who they are. They're writing. They complain. I check it out and I, I just don't even tell them I've solved it. You just find that it's solved. So I and you know what? I I've been around. I've been in. I've gone into the developments that are zero and created an economy from them. I've gone into an environment where in six months I give them fresh water and I can see them glow. To the campaigns now, President Mohamed Buhari has urged the people of Adamawa State who he described as uh, progressives to prove it once again by voting massively to retain the governing APC at the center and return the land of beauty to the rank of the progressives. He was speaking at the campaign rally for APC candidate Simula. Adamawa, the land of beauty is the first state President Muhammad Buhari will be visiting to campaign for his party since the formal launch of the vote-seeking crusade in Plateau State on November 15 last year. <laughs> his wife, Aisha Buhari, is an indigenous here and the state has an opportunity to set a record in the history of Nigerian politics and annals of democracy by electing the first ever female governor. There hasn't been a lady governor since we started the system. We are going to be going to run and she is going to win God willing. The president who thanked the people of Adamawa for reposing their thrust in him during the last two presidential elections, wants them to continue with this spirit, remain loyal to the party, and support this presidential candidate, Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu. I advise you to please be focused. APC came into the political field to make sure that Nigerians are recognized as the owners of the country. There are no other slaves. There are no real goals. There are fellow Nigerians. I would like you to make sure that you do a hundred dollar to me. President Buhari used the opportunity to assure the nation's youth that they mean so much to the governing APC and should therefore remain patriotic as well as true to the ideas of decency, respect and accountability. Don't allow fraudulent people to come and dominate you are no to. Similarly, President Buhari did not mince words as to where his interest lies when he paid a courtesy visit to the paramount ruler of Adamawa, Lamido Fomina, Dr. Muhammad Ubarkindo Ali Mustafa. Uh, is speaking with uh, so taking my candidate and first leader governor, we are here to give it our love and support. And those who are opposing us, both the Lamido, Dr. Barkindo Ali Mustafa, and the governor of the state, Ahmadu Umaru Funtiri, were unanimous that the people of Adama are indebted to the Buhari administration for the unprecedented support towards the development of the state in various sectors of the economy. And still in Yola, it was a careful ruling by the APC, knowing that the state has an indigenous on the ballot. APC presidential candidate Ashura Jubala Tinubu ever told them to give him the garland. The APC presidential campaign got a big boost in Yola. The big fishes came to swim with Ashuaju, none bigger than today's henchman, President Muhammad Buhari.
Buhari's physical supports an attestation to APC's strong bonds of friendship and loyalty. Jula is a metaphoric hot plate of beans for the president. One of APC's main opponents is from here. They are also the president's in-laws. So, the dance here is a careful one. God has brought the change we have been looking for. APC presidential candidate Bolatinobu is, however, on a mission and it says he offers renewed hope of economic, educational and agricultural revitalization while ensuring adequate security that allows the speedy development of the country. All of you, expect that we will get you a great properly. We will pay attention to your needs. In Adi, working together, we may present all of the people we stand out. Vote us and we would create more job opportunities in Adamawa states. Having lost the state to PDP in the 2019 general elections after ruling the state twice, APC hopes to reclaim popularity here in the coming elections. Locally, it has an old president of Joker, a first Madame Governor, perhaps. From Yula, Yusbao, and you have NC News. The Presidential Campaign Council of the New Nigeria People's Party and MPP has been inaugurated with a mandate to ensure the victory of Senator Rabbi Musa Konkoso, the 1053 member council, as for Lashadia Liu as secretary. The presidential candidate of the party, Rabbi Musa Konkoso, is the chairman of the council, with members of the National Executive Committee and Board of Trustees enlisted into the management. All former and serving governors, National Assembly members, as well as ministers who are members of the party are also to serve in the council. The party believes that the massive support and reception it has received in the ongoing presidential campaigns nationwide will translate into victory for Kwan Kwaso in the election. I want to call on all the Nigerians to go right to the PCC and the all politics of the PCC to continue the legal organization of supporters and convincing from voters to ensure the success of the Indian government project. We are convinced that the government as a leader is a clear analyst of the opportunities in the organization and the leader who is on the leader in the world. The party wants the presidential campaign council to sustain its ongoing grassroots mobilization strategy through vigorous door-to-door -door campaign, road shows, and town hall meetings in rural areas. And the chances are very bright. If you see some of the uh, what the kids of what happened when we are visiting some of these states, you cannot put the whole state on your back. Upon raising portal for donations towards the presidential campaign was also launched. TikTok, TikTok, uh, the time is uh, fast moving towards uh, election day. Hopefully, you all have your PVCs. That has been Police Group Update for today. We'll be back again on Friday for a fresh packet. My name is Fisar Ogunfi, urging you to play your politics for the greater good. And as we move closer to D Day, uh, 25th February, and of course, until March, uh, keep it locked on Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's finest and largest for news, reviews, previews, and interviews. Bye bye now. Thank <laughs> you.